And welcome back to The Rock. Justin Morris here with Haley Zemick. 74 to 62, the final score here at the Prudential Center. Seton Hall Pirates falling to the Xavier Musketeers. And Haley, it was a bad game from the start. The Seton Hall Pirates started this one off down 20 at one point. Only had about six points through the first 12 minutes of the game. We talked at halftime about whether they would be able to pull off a comeback. We've always had these slow starts, but they were just unable to get some fire in the second half and turn the tide in this one. What was the biggest key to the loss for the, for the Pirates? Well, I think the biggest thing was that they tried to get that comeback after being down 20, 24. And the thing is, they kept going back and forth between being down 15 and now they're down 10. And oh, they got an eight point deficit. And at one point, they did have the lead, but they were only up by two points. That was their only lead during the game. So I think the biggest thing is that they couldn't cut it close enough to really get that upset. Quincy McKnight had 15 points in the loss. Jared Roden with 13. Miles Powell failed to even reach double digits. He was not one from nine from three-point range. Talk about Miles Powell's performance, but also our scoring. How, why, why could we not put the ball in the basket? I think it was just an off day for Miles Powell. We don't really know what was going on with him. He was, only had nine points, and it was just upsetting. He was upset, as you could tell, from the end of the game, yeah. <laughs> but also a lot of the contenders that had double digits, they were putting their heart into the game. They were right. putting their soul into the game, but they just couldn't make that win known to the fans. And we talked about what Coach Wood would be saying to the team during the halftime speech. We did not start off well at all, but on the other side, Xavier completely dominated us in about every statistical category that there is. 51 to 22 was the rebounding margin. That is the worst we have had all season. And we especially, we've talked about the high differences between the teams. We have twin towers. I mean, Romaro Gill, 7'2", Aki Obiagu, 7'2", Sandra Mamakelishvili, 6'10", Jared Roden, about 6'8", Tyree Samuel, around 6'10". Their tallest player, 6'10". Jones, who actually had 19 points, 18 rebounds. Najee Marshall had 19 points as well, 10 rebounds. Rebounding was, was definitely the, one of the biggest categories that we fell to, and Coach Roy mentioned that after the game. Why could we not down pull, pull down any boards? What was the problem with the rebounding? Willard said right in the press conference that they just played terrible. He knew that. He was speaking very well when it came to talking about the Xavier team. He saw that they were playing well. He talked individually about each player, whether it be Marshall or Jones. One of the main things was they weren't rebounding. Like right. you said, they weren't able to box out, get the boards. The other team was just more successful in that aspect. The other team was successful in a lot more aspects than that outshot us about 55 to 30 something percent I believe it was we did however force 18 turnovers from the Musketeers they only forced six from us was some bad spots in the game but talk about the bright moments that we saw from this team where what was good about it and what can we do to get better well while we were sitting watching the game we were talking about a lot of moves that the different players had Quincy McKnight before he did unfortunately get injured he had great moves to the basket. He was driving. Mamu had that strong finish and then got fouled. Right. It's just those moments that you need to look on and say, wow, this team has talent. They have the power to win. This just unfortunately was a tough loss on all parts, each individual player. They have two away games coming up. Georgetown will be Wednesday. Saturday will take on number eight, Villanova. Have yet to see what the rankings will be once they come out, but that will be the biggest game we have played thus far. Coach Willard said in the postgame press conference he did not believe we would go undefeated in Big East play. He said we were going to lose one. So, Haley, what do you think about going forward? Is this a good loss for us to have to kind of give us a little notch of reality to kind of give us down from that 10-game winning streak that we had this far? And what do we have to do going forward? Well, I think one of the biggest things is it was a tough loss, but it may help them. It may make them think about the things they need to work on. Right. As I quote Jared Roden when we interviewed him, he said that Xavier came out today and they were the aggressor. We not we were not as much. <laughs> but Georgetown know. on Wednesday, Seton Hall needs to come out and be tough. They need to play hard and they need to be the aggressor on the court. Haley, you mentioned Quincy McKnight going down with the injury. It was about five minutes left to go in that one. Injured his leg and did not look to be okay at all. Actually had to be helped off of the floor with that one. Willard in the postgame press conference said he was not going to mention anything about McKnight. Not, we're, we don't know if it's going to be out for the season. If he's, he could be back tomorrow, according to Willard's words. So no word yet on what McKnight's status is. Definitely a big loss if he's going to be out with substantial time for a senior. Big guy in our program. Miles Powell, you mentioned his anger and coming off of the court, 
not even wanted to talk to anybody, walked off the court in post game and didn't give anybody a handshake. He's going to have to make a comeback as well. But talk about Sandra Mamas Kelishvili coming back and what we're going to have to do as far as the injury depleted roster and also how Miles Powell can come back and bounce back from only a nine point deficit or a nine point game. Well, Willard, after the game, he mentioned that Mamu got more time than he was actually thinking they would be giving him. Mm -hmm. He came out, he played strong, he had great points, he had great rebounds. He overall is doing very well after having weeks off. Powell, I think that this game might have opened his eyes. It might show him that, yes, he's the star on the court, but defense is going to stop him. They're going to put two or three guys on him, like right. Willard mentioned, right. and he's going to have to really fight during Georgetown. Yes, we already played them and we know what kind of team they are, but I think Powell will be able to pull through and be the player that he is, that leader for the Seton Hall team. I was talking with someone next to me and they mentioned that Miles Powell might have just given up his lead in the Big East Player of the Year ranking to Marcus Howard. We'll see how that comes out, but a lot of teams will be throwing double teams at him. They feel like they've kind of got the formula to be able to stop this guy, but we'll see how he comes out with next game. That's going to do it here from the Prudential Center. 74 to 62, the final score exactly. Xavier Musketeers taking that one over the Pirates now fall to eight to one, eight and one in the Big East. For Justin, excuse me, for Haley Zemeck, I'm Justin Morris. We'll catch you next time on Pirate TV.